say about hepatorenal syndrome. What is that? The word itself it is describing there is a problem with liver and kidney. Let's get some more details. By definition, HRS, hepatorenal syndrome, is a reversible functional renal impairment that occurs in patients with advanced liver cirrhosis or those with uh, acute liver failure. And it is characterized by marked reduction in GFR, glomerular filtration rate, and renal plasma flow with the absence of any other renal issues. And uh, it happens because of intense uh, renal artery uh, constriction and predominant vaso vasodilatation in peripheral arteries. And the main point is the tubular function is preserved with the absence of proteinuria or any histologic changes in the kidney. It will be more clear when we will look into the pathophysiologic mechanics. Okay, when we are looking to the pathophysiologic mechanism of uh, HRS, hepatorenal syndrome, we have here liver cirrhosis, okay? As a result of uh, liver cirrhosis, the liver tissues are get damaged and this will cause portal hypertension. Okay, body has to manage this portal hypertension. Portal hypertension means high pressure in the portal vein. So, uh, the body will release nitric oxide to make the vasodilation. So this nitric oxide will uh, cause planknic vasodilatation. This will uh, result the more pooling of blood in splanchnic circulation. We call it splanchnic uh, stealing phenomenon. This will uh, this splanchnic vasodilatation will steal more blood from the other circulatory areas. This will result decrease effective circulatory volume. This decreased effective circulatory volume will stimulate many processes in our system. So what will happen with the brain? So the brain will get stimulated and the pituitary will release increased uh, vasopressin, ADH hormone. This will cause uh, decreased vasodilatation and increased vasoconstriction in the kidney. Okay, come to the heart. What will happen with the heart? The baroreceptors, it will stimulate the sympathetic nervous system activity in the heart. So this will cause tachycardia and increase cardiac output. Okay, come back to the renal blood vessels. So in the renal blood vessels, it will stimulate increased renin angiotensin aldosterone system. This will also cause uh, renal vasoconstriction okay so as the disease uh, progress uh, the liver tissues are getting more and more damaged this will cause more and more portal hypertension so the body will release more nitric oxide and splanchnic stealing phenomena will take place more worse so this will uh, result mark reduction in the effective circulation then this all process, this all process will get to the maximum. Okay, as a result of this, uh, the heart will get more tachycardic and finally cardiac dysfunction. Okay, and the atrial natriuretic uretic peptide will be uh, released from the atria uh, to manage the extracellular fluid. And as a result of all this process, the kidney will get more and more exhausted. Okay, so finally we have here uh, increased renal sodium retention and decreased uh, capacity to excrete solute free water and uh, hyponatremia, it's mainly uh, dilutional and uh, decreased GFR because of the vasoconstriction and increased serum creatinine and finally renal impairment. Now we'll see the types of HRs. There are mainly two types. Uh, type 1 and type 2. In type 1, this is the most serious type, it is defined as at least two folds increase in serum creatinine level to the level of greater than 2.5 during a period of less than two weeks. In some patients with type 1 HRS will have only the urine output 400 to 500 ml per day. Type 2 HRS 
uh, it is defined as the renal impairment is less severe than type 1. The main clinical feature in type 2 HRS is ascites it is, which is resistant to diabetics. Okay, let's wind up. As I said before, hepatorenal syndrome is a problem with the, the liver and affected by kidney. Okay, and this is a very big topic and the, still the studies and researches are ongoing. We will see it later with further more details. Thanks for watching me. Bye-bye. <laughs>